All right, so my name is Timothy D. Block. Welcome to the Blue Team Starter Kit. Um, see my Twitter handle there. This is a very basic talk. This is for uh, IT security professionals with limited resources in both time, money, people. Uh, a lot of the tools I, I have used here and um, you know I found very effective and useful. Uh, and I wanted to share it with the uh, community. Uh, yeah, let me speak into the mic a little bit more. If you'd actually believe it, I do have a podcast. I got two of them. Uh, so I've got the PVC Security Podcast uh, and the Exploring Information Security Podcast. Um, and I mentioned those because a lot of these tools I found on uh, po listening to podcasts. I'm pretty much a podcast addict. I don't always uh, I make them, but I also listen to them. Security Weekly being one that I found some of some of these tools. Uh, Z Attack proc Proxy, which I'll be going through, is one of those tools that I heard on the Security Weekly podcast when I was given a challenge to start doing some AppSec at, at my organization. Uh, that was a great resource for that. So I have worked for the state of South Carolina for the last seven years. Uh, any government employees know that uh, as a state employee, you have limited resources in both time, money, and people. So, uh, But we still got to get a job to do. So um, this is uh, why I wanted to create this talk is because I figured there's a lot of other people out there that could use uh, these tools. So several of the challenges that I was given uh, included, you know, re finding out about these tools, researching them, uh, staying up with some of the latest information security news, uh, application security, uh, you know, we're getting infected with malware. Why are we getting infected with malware? What can we do to improve upon that? And, you know, we've, you know, Adobe Flash has come out with its seventh vulnerability in the, in the last week. How, you know, how do we patch that? in an easy way, uh, not easy problems to solve and sometimes expensive if you want to go to talk to some of the vendors there. Uh, so right there are all the tools, just straight up. Uh, you got Google, Twitter, uh, OWASP, Z Attack Proxy, Zap, uh, Mandiant's Redline Tool, and uh, Microsoft's Enhanced Mitigation Experience Toolkit, otherwise known as Emmet, uh, and then Admin Arsenal's PDQ Deploy. So the first challenge I was given was research. I don't think this is going to be a surprise to anyone. Uh, this is the tool, number one tool of choice for IT professionals everywhere, and that's Google. Um, you know, using you know, there's Google dorking, uh, which is uh, I think a lot of security professionals know about. But there's also little things, techniques that you can do with Google. For example, if you search for InfoSec tools, you're going to get a lot of uh, InfoSec, and a sentence later there's the word tools. If you put quotations around that, you're going to really refine your search to any any hits with InfoSec tools in that order. Uh, so really learning how to manipulate Google to improve your search process is, is very important for, you know, researching stuff and, and discovering stuff. Um, there's no really demo. I think, you know, Google's pretty straightforward. Um, so challenge number two is threat intelligence. Yeah. Okay, so it's Google Hackers, Google Hacking for Penetration Testers 2005 version. Okay, thank you for that. Yeah. So if anyone's got any tools that, that can uh, help with that, uh, you know, this is being recorded and, and let's get that out there. Um, threat intelligence uh, is something, you know, it, it, you got to keep up with InfoSec. It's an ever-changing thing. Um, so you need to really keep up with that. And I've found Twitter. Um, Twitter is, is really, it's free. Uh, you can set up lists if you need to. Uh, we started a local user group, and I use that to just follow 400 information security professionals. So uh, when something happens, like hacking team getting 400 gigabytes of their internal data dropped on the Internet, uh, everyone's going to be talking about that. And there's, there's, there can be a lot of fun from that. There's a lot of snark. Uh, there's a lot of funny comments. But as you can see up here, there's a lot of people doing analysis on the data and starting, you know, they, they discovered three Adobe uh, I think it was two or three Adobe vulnerabilities uh, in that internal database or in that internal data. Okay, let me go follow Adobe when find out when they're going to be releasing the new new vulnerability patch so I can go patch all my machines in the agency. Um, so I've really found use from Twitter when all the open SSL uh, bugs came out. Uh, Heartbleed was probably the first one that set that off. A lot of people discussing it. It was also very hard to ignore. 
Um, so when something big happens, you can see a lot of people talking about it, a lot of people discussing it. You can ask questions of people. They're going to be sharing links. They're going to be sharing tools. Uh, I was able to find some tools, some Python tools that I was able to then run against my websites to, you know, find out if 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 they're vulnerable or not. Um, so Twitter can, you know, don't overlook Twitter. Yes, there is drama, but you can, like any other appliance, you can tune that out. You can, if people are sharing um, pictures of their kids too much and that, you know, not really giving you much value, you can unfollow those people. So it, the feed is very much up to you and how to control it. And it's free, of course. It's, of course, your behavioral data, but... Uh, my third challenge was web application security. So uh, I was uh, tasked with we got to start doing security assessments on all our applications. Go do that. Don't. I have no idea how to do that. Like I mentioned on Security Weekly, I heard them talking about Z, Z the Z attack proxy, also known as ZAP. Uh, OWASP uh, puts that out. And for anyone that doesn't know, Open Web Application Security Project is a nonprofit open source community so you can get a lot of valuable tools there for web application security is that being one of them um, and there's that's the interface right there um, so what you want to do is you first want to set up zap as a proxy and then you want to click on everything within that application fill in, click on every link fill out every form submit every button uh, and then from there, you're going to start using some of the, the the automated tools that they have there. I don't know how big that is. Uh, I hope you can see that. But essentially, from there, you spider the site. Uh, you can do Ajax spider for Ajax type of content. There's a forced browse, uh, which will, you know, has a list of directories. And it'll go out and look for uh, hidden directories. That usually takes a long time, depending on how big of a list you have. Zap has some default, but uh, like anything in Zap, it's, it has a lot of granular control. So you can get some of the low-hanging fruit, and then uh, from there, you can really start digging into, as you start using it more, digging into it. Uh, the other tool that I, I, I forgot to mention at the beginning of this is Burp Suite. Uh, I think if you're going into web application security, Burp Suite is the tool of choice. Uh, Zap has, I think, been catching up in terms of usability. Um, the downside to Burp Suite is that it is a $300 a year subscription. Zap is completely free. Uh, I've had developers uh, start using Zap uh, because we put this at the end of their process. And, you know, it's kind of like a test. So they wanted to figure out what they're getting wrong. And so I started working with them. And I was surprised when they came back and start, were starting to run their own Zap reports. Um, and I didn't need to go through and because with the burp edition you have it's throttled a little bit you can get the free version but it's throttled zap is not throttled so you can give it to them and let them go 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 play with it and you know your web developers using a tool like zap is just uh, just makes the process go a lot smoother and is a lot you get a lot more value out of it and they they find the problems before they get to you so after you've done, after you've kind of mapped out the application, you can run Active Scan. As it, and as you can see there in the Active Scan, you've, it starts running through several different techniques of so path traversal, remote file inclusion, cross-site script, and OWASP that releases the top 10 every few years, although I don't think it's been changed in ever. I think they released it and it hasn't really changed all that much. But it runs through all that for you. Um, and it usually takes, however, however big the application is, it can take a, you know, a few minutes to a few hours. Uh, and then you can get this nifty, generate this report here, which can be, you know, you can take, this is an HTML report. Uh, they have an XML report so that you can uh, put that into something like ThreadFix or uh, Dratus or some kind of tracking uh, application so you can keep track of this stuff because that's one of the first things I found out was we'd have this, but it wasn't feasible to fix it at that time. We had to, you know, a couple months from now, we'll go back and fix it, but it, it's upon me to go back and make sure they actually do that. So a, a, a thing like th a thread fix has a community version and an enterprise version uh, implement that to really track this stuff. But what's great about this report is that you can take this HTML report and give it to developers and uh, start working on some of those problems. Before you do that, though, make sure there's a it shows you the URL that's in there, the description of the attack. And then the attack itself, uh, you, you want to verify and confirm because Zap is not perfect. It does have false positives. So you need to go in there and confirm that it that what it found was actually there because it might not necessarily be. And it's also got links and references and all sorts of sorts of goodies there. Um, so one of the 
uh, so I did, in along with the confirming part, I did have um, some SQL injection that I confirmed. Uh, the developer didn't necessarily believe me, so I took them over to the computer and they said, um, you know, I showed them and the technique and they said something pretty, uh, pretty amazing to me, which was hackers are so smart. So, you know, the, the developers, if, if you're willing to give them time and work with them, they're, they're very much, they want to get it right too, just, just like we do. So my fourth challenge was forensics. So we're getting the SOC alerts within the state. There's a, there's a state IT that uh, monitors all the traffic of all the agencies and we get regular SOC alerts. So initially we're just re-imaging them, sending them off, but we decided uh, we want to look into what what's actually getting us infected. What are people going to? Can we implement some kind of defenses, or you know, change some kind of web filter rule or something to to stop some of these infections? And that's where uh, Mandiant Redline stepped in. There is uh, the alternative tool to this is Volatility. I've never used Volatility, but Re Mandiant Redline is something that I've gotten real familiar with. It's a free tool. You can just do a Google search for it and go download it. Um, all these tools are very well documented. Uh, Zap is well documented, Redline, and, and just about everything. So uh, it's pretty easy to start uh, downloading and, and um, using. And so once you build out your package, this is the folder structure. All you really have to do is click on the Run, run Redline audit script there at the bottom, uh, the batch file, and it'll pop up a command prompt. And depending on how how much processing the computer has and how many you know files are on the system it'll go through go out and collect all the uh, events from the machine so regist registry settings uh, browsers event details all that stuff and it'll put it in one place for you so you run run that and then you're gonna open uh, previous analysis and you'll be able to open up that session file and um, it'll do some more analysis on the actual session file itself you click on I am investigating a host base on external investigation lane because uh, we're using a SOC alert and there you have the the, um, uh, the layout there of everything within a time period so what you want to do is there's a time wrinkle option you set it to like a two to five minute period because right there that's a that's about a two two minutes on either side of a time period I have 742 items to go through so if I don't have an exact time I have to, you know, really kind of um, expand that out a little bit, but you can get pretty, pretty big into that. So one of my wins from this was we had a phishing email come in that hit 30 different users, uh, seven people. No, I'm sorry, eight people. The seventh person sent it to their manager and clicked on the attachment. So we had a total of eight people open up the attachment. Uh, luckily, we had. Um, our users are very good at reporting that kind of stuff. They, they opened the command prompt. All it was was a command prompt flash and then went away. So it was pretty pretty obvious, and, and luckily they were paying attention. But we took the red line tool, put it on the first couple, found out that an exe, drive, exe file had been dropped within the Windows temp folder. So we were able to remove that. Nothing else uh, was installed or done. So we were pretty confident that we had gotten the infection. Uh, eight users had, having to re-image them, it's going to take, you know, two to three days if it's all eight at once you know a week and if the re-imaging guy is doing PC refresh of 300 machines it could be even longer so this was all within one Friday and we were able to get everyone back to work uh, so the other one is on top of that how do we keep these machines from getting infected um, around you know and right, our organization we've finally gotten rid of Windows XP but it went it rolled past the Windows XP end of support um, so we had an issue of, well, how do we harden these machines? We still need them around for legacy applications. Um, in this particular instant, we uh, had an Internet Explorer vulnerability come out um, that we wanted to, to remediate, and Microsoft Emmet uh, was the solution for that. Uh, a lot of these articles are coming out with, there's this new Internet Explorer vulnerability, and that the last sentence of that article is, Emmet is, uh, mitigates this vulnerability. Um, and it's well documented. Uh, you know, you got trusted sec. Dave Kennedy is, is very much a proponent of the tool. He's written a lot about it. You got Carlos Perez, uh, another pretty big name that has written about the tool. Sands has written about it, Microsoft TechNet. So it's, it's, it's out there. You can deploy it to your agency or to your organization, and then you can grab it with uh, group policy. 
to manage it. You get some very basic control with group policy. What you can do from there is though that you can uh, fully test Emmet um, and export an XML file that can then be used uh, during logon uh, as a logon script that they can then so you can then grab control of it. And we'll I'll explain why you want to do that here in a minute. Um, but this is the interface. It's very very simple. Uh, basically, what Emmet does is it it takes some of the normal processes in the machine and kind of hides them a little bit. So when a malicious attack or so of some kind comes in, it will, uh, you know, find it, it comes in trying to exploit that. It'll it'll block it. Uh, and usually, what you what you get is the the when a block occurs, the program uh, in the bottom right corner of pop up will occur saying this program was blocked due to this uh, kind of defense. Um, and this is the other screen. So you have a very basic setup. Uh, they also do popular software and recommended software. Adobe and Java are two on the basic. So just putting those in place is going to really help uh, uh, strengthen your endpoint security. Um, and you can go in here and uncheck. So if something like AEA, EAF plus pops up, you can go in and uncheck that for the program and, and get uh, Emmet back working. Um, so I tested this on my three machines, and I actually pushed out 4.0 to my organization just fine, no problems whatsoever. Tried to push out 5.1, um, and I had issues. I tested it on my three machines. Of course, it worked fine, so I decided to test it on uh, just the IT floor, and I derped uh, all the mainframe and developer machines. Uh, derp their uh, Microsoft Office and Internet Explorer. So I was running around that morning unchecking EAF Plus uh, for all of them. So it is very important that you test this out. And even on Microsoft's Emmet's tool, they have um, they have some programs there that it, Emmet isn't working with. So make sure. You're, but there's I've seen you know like I said Microsoft Office for whatever reason uh, was derped by Emmet. Um, so it's, it's, you know, everyone's got a unique environment, so make sure you're testing that thoroughly. Uh, in this scenario, you want to try to grab like a computer from each, each department and make sure uh, putting it on there and seeing if there's any issues and then uh, pushing it out. So finally, the last one is, is patch management. I'm sure a lot of people have struggled with it. There are very expensive tools out there to help with this. Uh, I think I found a solution that was relatively inexpensive. Um, PDQ Deploy has a free version and all these tools by the way you can go home today you can go home up into your room and download and start playing with uh, PDQ Deploy has a free version um, it is throttled um, like you, you can't download certain packages but it's it's only 500 bucks for the enterprise version um, and you can essentially go in there and this is the download screen and right there it even has Emmet on there for you to deploy uh, so when a new and, and Adobe's on there, there's just a whole host of uh, programs that are already in there. So they have programs that you can download, prepackaged, pre um, and set up for you to deploy silently. I've pushed Adobe Flash vulnerability or up, uh, Adobe Flash updates throughout the day uh, during business hours and never had an issue. So um, uh, it's pretty much just a great tool. Um, so once you have the package downloaded, you can deploy it via Active Directory, PDQ Inventory, Spiceworks, and, you know, a good old text file. Uh, so it, it works with all that. PDQ Inventory is Admin Arsenal's uh, inventory, and they, um, they it's for, it's another $500, but it, it's, they'll go out and inventory all your machines and find out what's installed on there and what version's on there. So all you have to do is approve the package and put it out. So um, here are some more resources. I will make these uh, this slide deck available on my website, timothydblock.com. And there's just a bunch of stuff out there. We've talked about Google, talked about just using the user guide for all these tools. Uh, YouTube, you know, conferences like this have a lot of great stuff on there. And here are all the tools again for posterity. And that's that's pretty much it. If anyone has any questions.